You're hovering over a crater of lava, with the only thing suspending you in the air being a thin rope that is losing its ability to withstand your weight by the seconds. Your nemesis stares at you from across a volcanic death pit and offers a proposition to you. You can avoid a scorching end to your miserable life in exchange for one thing, playing through the entirety of Ducky Quacky. And before this villain can complete their sentence, you've already managed to escape from the ropes and dive into the magma yourself to avoid the alternative. But let's say, in this alternate world, you don't decide to take the easy way out, and instead you decide to slog through this experience. Let's see what you were missing. Ducky Quacky is a platformer for the Switch and other systems that came out on October 25th of last year, 2022. Created by Weakfish Studio, a production company that has pursued several other Switch titles such as Blacksmith Forger, a 2D casual game, Boxer Punk Stories, a 2D side-scroller, Pandity, a 2D cute platformer, cute being the person of interest in this description, making sure we know this is in the same realm as Kirby or Alex Kidd as opposed to Mario or Little Nightmares. The physical features of the athlete and the platformer are what define the genre they get put in, after all. Although the company is called Weakfish, it should be called Reekfish because this game kind of stinks. Ducky Quacky looks and feels like an iPad game that was relocated to the Switch to trick broke motherfuckers like me into thinking we can afford a good time. Don't go into this game expecting Sonic Adventure levels of difficult and adventurous platforming. Don't even expect Sonic Boom levels. This is closer to Sonic X and the Leapster. Eggman is a super sucky machine. But let's check out what we're getting into with Ducky Quacky. So we start out the first couple of stages at this cabin on this island. Luckily it's broad daylight because if it was darker under these circumstances, you would think this was the beginning of a horror movie. Anyway, we're on this island, right? And immediately the first thing I want to do is leave. So I start walking. And you can just tell by the pace Mr. Ducky Quacky walks at that he's not in a rush to get anywhere. He's got that New York tourist stroll going on. Lucky for us, there are these tasty apples scattered around the island. They keep us satiated throughout this entire journey. How nice of the two kids who got lost here before us to leave an apple trail to keep us from getting peckish. Unfortunately, they will not be able to find their way out of here. So along with random produce, we find random keys. What do they unlock? Who cares? Pick those bad boys up and keep them in your pocket. We can probably sell them on the black market for a good price. So let's ask this young man. All right, he only sells cosmetics. The best part about these cosmetics is that they don't stack. You can only pick one to wear, so you can't dress like a Victorian snake oil salesman like this man. We can only choose one item that will define us to all strangers. So I picked the glasses because they make me look oh so studious. Speaking of strangers, there are these little turds on the levels as well that kind of wander about. I don't like the way they walk around, so I choose to destroy them. And how do you think a duck of my caliber and speed would handle a foe like this? If you guess yelling at them so loudly that it creates a visually colorful sound wave that annihilates an enemy, you'd be correct. There's not a lot of these enemies around, and they're not really a problem. They're honestly as much of a problem as you want them to be, and I want them to be. I will give the game this, it is a platformer. It is not very hard or challenging or interesting, but you can platform and solve puzzles. There are buttons and switches, so, you know, a platformer. Those are the most essential parts of these types of games, almost as important as jumping and the platforms. So after you hit all the buttons and collect the strange fruit all around, oh right, the keys too, almost forgot those because they're so, so important to the plot and progression of this story. You open the door at this castle, which is just here. Don't know who made it, don't really care. All I know is that if this medieval architect gets in my way, he'll also have to face my quacks. And after doing these puzzles over and over and over and over and over, you get to the new world. It's Mushroom Hill Zone, the light edition. Not gonna lie, I love this color palette here. I just despise that there's like nothing going on in these levels other than walking, jumping. That's the thing about this, it's just so tedious and bothersome to play. And there's nothing that keeps this game interesting other than hoping it gets better. And it feels like a kick in the balls or girl balls, depending on which you have. Whenever you finish a level and then you go to the next one, it's the exact same thing as last time. It's the Groundhog Day of shitty level design. Peter, let me see. Alright, here we go. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here for a second. How to make this game better in obvious ways. A run button, make this gameplay faster. 
path to suffer, you should at least make it quick. That's a courteous thing to do. Power-ups. Give this some pizzazz. Maybe a speed power-up or a higher jump power-up. Super quacks. Quacks that shrink people. Quacks that disrupt time and or space. Quacks that you can sell on the street. Maybe the ability to game in myself. The puzzles are boring, but they work. Maybe add more to those to make them more challenging. More of the same and more complicated manners. Are you getting that there should be more to your video game? Maybe have some puzzles that take advantage of the abilities Mr. Quack has, like jumping and walking and a stare that sees right through you. Perhaps just making these simplistic puzzles more fun to play. Kirby is a master of this type of gameplay. Simplistic and easy to understand, but challenging for those who want to try to collect extra stuff on a level. We can also have a higher level of customization. That's one of the most entertaining parts of Mario Odyssey, is dressing up Mario the way that I want and making him do sick athletic tricks. Like, look at this clown man doing flips. I love it. Collecting is entertaining, especially for platformers that are considered collectathons. It's like kind of in the name. Having unlockable or extra costumes is a great excuse for someone enjoying the game to replay it. More enemies and attacks. Maybe have some enemies that need to be destroyed in a special manner that doesn't slow down the gameplay. Oftentimes, if you have an enemy that just needs to be punched a bunch of times, that doesn't really change up the gameplay. Now I'm just sitting here punching a guy a bunch of times. There's not really a challenge, it's just more that I have to do. A game that suffers from this type of gameplay particularly is Sonic Heroes. There are these areas in that game where you just fight off a wave of enemies and in the game of all about speed like Sonic Heroes, sitting around and fighting something isn't very fun. Three times, the more you level up, the stronger the character becomes. And you're gonna need it folks because for the first time ever, enemies are now rocking health bars. Even the most common enemy in the game will take multiple jumps or homing attacks to take down at the lowest level. To make things easier on yourself, you can switch to the stronger power character to take them out, but this only works on the small fry, because later down the road, you'll encounter giant mooks with absurd amount of health. Since enemies are no longer taken out in one shot, I feel it's a constant pace breaker, and I find myself frantically looking for level up capsules to kill enemies faster with any character. There are even times when you can't progress until you kill every enemy in the vicinity, and that just makes combat feel like an outright inconvenience to me. There are a lot of other B-grade platforms that have the same issue. You can also have some enemies that you have to manipulate to open a part of the level to get a key. Like a guy who charges at you so you have to dodge him so that he opens a door or something. You can also use this type of gameplay to build more puzzles. Maybe mushroom ducks who have a bouncy head cause mushrooms. Maybe grass enemies in the grass stage that do grass things. Maybe a fly. Literally, any variety added to these levels would have made this game a little bit better. Variety is the spice of life, and variety is what you should have for your challenges. Once again, that's what makes these other games so interesting because there's not just one type of enemy on the stage and they're not the only ones on that stage. Also, boss battles. They're fun, they're important, they're the conclusion to an essay, the bow at the end of a play, they're the seasoning on a finished dish, they're the way a level of a video game gets wrapped up and the challenges of the world are all brought together in one cohesive fight or a puzzle just you know something essential for a 3d platformer this is like the main trope of like video games so yeah these are a few ways to make this game not dog shit i haven't completed it and i probably won't because fuck it I figured the best way to end this video would be to read the description of the game according to its creators, and maybe we'll get some answers about what the fuck is going on here and who we are. Ducky Quacky is a 3D platformer game. Our main character is a duck living in Duckland. Okay, one, what is Duckland? Why doesn't it have a sign? And are there only ducks in Duckland, me and the vendor? Is it called Duckland because of all the ducks that aren't here or because of the few ducks that are? He's a duckish. A duck-ish? He's not a duck? He's just kind of a duck-ish? I'm sorry, what? You must collect all the keys in the levels, open the lock, and go to the next level. I think it's a good idea to collect apples in levels. I'm glad you think so, sir or ma'am. I'm not really sure who I'm talking to. Are you duckish? Because I'm just a little confused-ish. Some sections have merchants who can sell you some clothes for apples. Also, this guy who sells clothes is either a visionary who is seeing the future of currency, a hungry mother or a very confused businessman. There are enemies in the levels. I know, it's the level design. The level design is my enemy. I figured that part out, but I don't know if there's anything I could do to stop it. You can beat them with your duck voice. Okay, I'll try that. <laughs> I 
think it's a good idea to collect enemies in levels. You can buy enemies and merchants apples in levels. There are apples who can sell you some merchants. You can beat them with your 20 cute and unique design levels. Beat merchants for apples. Some sections have a duck voice. Collect all accessories, clothes, merchants, and ducks. Mm -hmm. Come,